All right, so obviously this is the main you know, optical assembly of the telescope. It's an eight-inch uh, schmidt cassegrain style telescope. Uh, it's a reflector. It uses mirrors on the inside instead of lenses. Um, at the front here, it normally would cut off, but I've got a dew shield on it, which helps keep the stray light from like my house or whatever else. It also has wire strap that goes around this edge for the front uh, lenses, and that's being kept warm by some power. It's a little bit warm, just enough to make sure that you don't end up with dew building up on the information as the uh, moisture sets in for the night. Um, this here I just use, it's technically just a finder scope, but I've attached a small camera to it. Uh, and I use that as the guide scope. So the mount that this all sits on has to be polar aligned with Polaris and then it pivots uh, to follow the same, or actually to counteract the rotation of the stars through the sky, or counteract the rotation of the Earth to stay on the star as it moves through the sky so that you can do longer exposures without it blurring. Um, in order to enable that, you either need a very expensive mount that's very precise, or you get what most people have, which is a separate guide camera. And that uses this smaller scope to just track a single point, single star in the sky. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it's in the field of view of the scope. And any time it moves off a pixel, it's constantly monitoring. If it moves off a pixel, then it makes a slight adjustment to get the scope back to where it should be if it was perfectly tracking that, that, uh, that deep space object or whatever you're, you're imaging. So by doing that, you can do you know a 10 or a 15 minute uh, exposure if you need to, whereas without it, you might only be doing you know, 30 seconds or a minute if you had really good uh, polar alignment. Uh, in the back here, I don't know if you can see this disc that's hanging off the bottom or not, it's kind of blends in with my deck, but um, that's got a couple different filters in it. Um, so you can take different, you can, you can cut out different types of light. Um, so I've got like a, a different narrow band filters in there to get only hydrogen alpha emission light or uh, only sulfur, uh, you know, sulfur light, it's different ones depending on what you're trying to image. Um, because different things in the night sky actually emit at different wavelengths. And then I've also got a, a standard um, uh, like light pollution kind of filter just to kind of get rid of some of the day glow when you're in a city area like I am. Behind that, uh, it may or may not be visible, let me move it a little bit. So this, this red thing in the back here is the actual main camera. So that's the actual thing doing the, the real imaging of the target that we're trying to shoot. Um, this is uh, technically about a 4K sensor on it, and whereas this is a much smaller sensor. But they're both, uh, you know, very sensitive because any they're they're specifically made for astronomy, so they're, they're highly sensitive. Uh, in this case, both of them are actually color cameras, although some people like to use uh, black and white cameras for other reasons. Um, off of that, I've got connected uh, on the back side, even harder to see up here. Is actually an electronic focuser. So that's connected to my focus knob on the back of the telescope and controlled by my application on my tablet or on your phone. Uh, you, can, you can handle the focus through the application and it just uses this to make lots of micro steps. So it's nice and it can be very precise and holds the, it actually adjusts the focus overnight as the temperature changes because that tends to change the optical properties you might need to adjust for. Um, so it can take all that into account. Um, let's see, I don't use this right now, but on the further on the back side here is another kind of camera called the Star Sense that can actually automatically do an alignment as long as there's any stars in the sky and, and a reasonable amount of sky area that it can see. It'll control the mount and move around and, and figure out where it's pointing just based on what it sees uh, through that camera alone. But I don't need to use that for uh, what I'm doing with imaging. It's, it tends to be more useful if you're just doing viewing and you don't have another computer already connected. Um, so the main, let me point this down a little bit. This red box down here is actually kind of all the magic. If you can kind of see that or not. It's not very big. It's actually a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, underneath it all. Um, and then it's got some on the side you can't really see, but it's got a couple DC outputs which are used, which I'm using to control the uh, dew heater, to get power to the dew heater, and also to um, power the camera because the camera, the main camera is actually cooled. We cool it down about 20 degrees Celsius below ambient because the colder the chip, the less noise you get in uh, when you're capturing your images. Um, but this box here is what connects, what I connect to with the app on the phone or on the tablet and that is able to drive the 
filter wheel cameras, guide camera, and the guiding, uh, take the images, control the focus, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can do live stacking in it where it'll take images and constantly pile them on top of each other to kind of improve the image as you go, which is something you normally do in post-processing. Um, it's not as good as if you use full-blown software to do it, but it's a pretty good approximation for just being nice and handy built into the box. Um, you can do, well, there's a polar alignment process in there as well to uh, make it easy to, to get yourself aligned uh, nice and good so you can get better long exposures. And all of that's powered, sorry about the motorcycle. As you can see down here, I've got a little Wi-Fi box here that connects this whole setup to my home network. So I can just connect my home network when I'm inside and have it doing imaging without having to be out in the speedos normally. And it's all powered off some Celestron power tanks uh, to drive all the devices. So that's pretty much everything <laughs> from the tech side. Any questions?